Stand by for the fastest half hour in television. event takes us to the Hickory Speedway and a 100 mile late model stock car race, the Hickory 250. The track is four tenths of a mile of hard clay surface, a tricky little dish composed mostly of hard left turns but with enough straights to eliminate the tourists. This kind of event is the real backbone of stock car racing, the bread and butter work of drivers and mechanics. If you're not a racing buff and wonder what these guys do between the glamorous super speedway spectacles, this is it. You'll find even the old pros out practicing like this every time they change tracks. It's like putting, shooting jump shots, or hitting a look-in pass. Practice makes it work or shows your mistakes. Now let's look at some of the favorites in this grand national event. Number 64, a Ford driven by Elmo Langley of Landover, Maryland. Number 41, one of the all-time greats, Curtis Turner of Charlotte in a Ford. From Camden, South Carolina, number 11, Ned Jarrett, another Ford veteran. And number six, from Spartanburg, South Carolina, one of the top young stars of stocks, David Pearson. Number 26, driving a car made famous by Junior Johnson as a young man with a big name of his own, Bobby Isaac. Number 59, the Charlotte Independent, Tiger Tom Pistone. Number 43, made famous by Richard Petty. And number 55, Tiny Lund. The capacity crowd of 14,000 is tense with the excitement of the moment as the cars move into the pace lap. Out of the fourth turn now, speed picking up, starter checking the lineup, crowd on its feet, they look even, green silk falls and the race is on. the turn. It's as tight as a beggar's budget. But at the top of backstretch, Curtis Turner, number 41, whips the board out of the pack and takes the lead. The Charlotte veteran, one of racing's all-time greats, shows how he got that way as he sprints through the first lap. He's challenged for every foot by Elmo Langley, number 64, who takes Turner in the third turn. But Turner isn't having any as he side slips to the inside and they go head to head down the stretch with Turner again pushing the Ford to the front. No rest for the leader though. In the back stretch, it's Jarrett, number 11, making a move and passing Langley and Turner. The crowd is wild with excitement. Running like a thief, Jared pads the lead in the flying Ford. Down the back stretch again, he's really scorching the clay. Driving steadily like the champion he is, Jared steps on out. Back in the pack, here's a pair to watch. Pearson and Isaac, 6 and 26, 4th and 5th. But not for long, here's Pearson lifting third place from Langley coming down the stretch. Unworried at this point, number 11, Jared continues to stretch his lead and Jarrett is still in control. But here's one who isn't. Eldon Yarborough loses it in the fourth turn and takes a friend with him. That little tango sends Isaac to the pit for, among other things, a clean windshield, while Yarborough goes on by like nothing happened. Can you top that? Well, Tiny Lund can. Here goes the cross South Carolina big guy into his own version of the old soft shoe. Tiny proves he's a pro and he hangs right in there. Meanwhile, Jarrett, number 11, is still leading and making it look easy. But what's this? Here's Jarrett slowing to come into his pit. The Ford coast into the pit area and just like that, the complexion of the race has changed. This unscheduled stop will cost Jarrett the lead. Look out! Richard Petty finds the dirt track going a little tricky as he tries it in the sideways right in front of the new leader. Petty writes the Plymouth, the chase continues, and the crowd strains to see who's in first. And it's none other than Curtis Turner, number 41. 
After chasing Jared for so long, Turner has nursed the Ford back to the front with second place Pearson, number six, breathing on his bumper. Now suddenly and dramatically, the pursuer is pursued. Coming hard, Pearson begins to close on Turner. Pushing his Dodge to the limit and nearly beyond, the Spartanburg Speedster slowly but surely narrows the gap with every turn of the wheel, driving with a sure hand and an iron nerve. Calling on a champion skill, honed by years of experience, Turner drives desperately, knowing that Pearson is closing on him, knowing that now, late in the race, if he is to win, he must hold the lead. But Pearson cannot be shaken, and now the race is right here. Pearson in the Dodge, number six. Turner in the Ford, 41, fencing for first. The crowd is standing and cheering as the tension of a wheel-to-wheel -wheel duel becomes nearly unbearable. And finally, breaking from the deadlock, Pearson makes his move through the traffic, and he takes Turner. With only a few miles to go, David Pearson has come from back in the pack to take the lead. Turner hangs in second place, but almost unbelievably, look who's challenging him now. It's Ned Jarrett. But the Camden Flash has pushed it too far, and it's a Ford Watusi in the third turn. Doug Cooper manages to avoid a collision, and Jarrett limps off at school zone speed. Whistling over the red clay oval, number six Pearson sets an unbeatable pace. Pow! A whip crack spin in the second turn. And there goes the last chance for Richard Petty. One of the few drivers left with still a shot at Pearson. Up against the fence, and number 43 is out of the race. Now with only a few rounds left, here are the top three. Pearson, number six, is first. Turner, 41, second, and Isaac, 26, third. Anybody can see that the end is near. Down the back stretch, the checkered flag less than a lap away. Pearson still drives like the devil's running second. Through the third and fourth turns, it's all over but the shouting as Spartanburg's David Pearson takes the checkered flag and top money in the Hickory 250. Here are the official results of this race. First, number six. Second, number 41, third, number 26, and fourth, number 11.